talking about providing more information and about shaky, crazy, nonsense things that don't make any sense. This headline, courtesy of page six, shaken Meghan Markle and Prince Harry involved in near fatal paparazzi chase in NYC. Now I understand why everybody hates Meghan Markle. Now I get why Piers Morgan has a fucking non-stop rage boner for this woman. Now I know why people call Prince Harry a crybaby. What is wrong with these people? I don't follow the royal family in any way, shape or form. Don't really care for them in any way, shape or form. Either for the good, even for the worst. But one thing that I remember happening during the whole fallout with them and the royal family was this phrase of like, we want to be left alone. This, you know, denouncing the throne or whatever royal, you know, name and shit they had against them. All of this stuff and sort of moving away to the US and whatever it may be was essentially um, them signaling that, hey, we don't want to be a part of the royal family. We want to live our somewhat, quote unquote, quote, normal, private, quiet life away from the limelights. If that's the case, why are they so hell bent on always being in the headlines? on always being the victim, on always quote-unquote telling their story. What is this story? So they were involved in a near-fatal car crash, and this becomes a big story. It was a near-fatal car crash. Nothing actually happened. So far, at the moment of recording, no, ex or no actual footage of whatever car chase happened. But instead, they put this news out because they know that it evokes some very um some very sort of like worrying images and worrying memories of what happened to princess diana so people will initially start making some direct correlations but none of that actually happened or occurred so they don't want to be in front of the cameras but they don't mind also courting controversy courting the attention and just generally being absolute drama queens now maybe something seriously did happen but so far what I've seen, it just looks like them actually performing and keeping it themselves out there in public again. It's really strange. And again, this is coming from somebody who hasn't paid too much attention to the details. I've not read Prince Harry's book. Um, I don't know what's actually going on now, day to day, blow, blow for blow. But from what I remember hearing about these guys, they wanted to be left alone. They went away from the limelights. They wanted less press intrusion, less paps around them. If that's the case, why are you even talking about this? If that's the case, why are you inventing this fiction? And if that's the case, why, why, why? Let's read the article courtesy of the New York Post. It says, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are extremely upset and shaken. Of course, everyone's shaken, everyone's upset, everyone's angry. God almighty. After being involved in a near catastrophic two-hour paparazzi chase in New York City on Tuesday night. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who were travelling with Markle's mum, Doria Ragland, were pursued by photographers after leaving the Ziegfeld Theatre, where the former actress was honoured by the Gloria Steinman at the Woman Visions Awards in Manhattan. I would like to ask a question. Why is Meghan Markle getting awards? For giving African kids water? For dancing with disabled children? Why is she be giving awards? Can somebody answer that? Why does she get awards for just being alive, for having really nice hair, for having a really pretty face, for wearing high heels? Why is she getting an award? Who knows? It continues. The trio left the event in an SUV around 10 p.m. and were immediately followed around uh, by around 12 paparazzis, we're told. They eventually decided to ditch their original vehicle and jump into a yellow cab in the hopes of evading photos or source claims. So these guys are wondering why a group of thirsty, clout-hungry paparazzis were after them. I can tell you why. Because Prince Harry was in a yellow fucking cab. Of course they were chasing them all across the city. Wouldn't you? Taking a picture of Prince Harry in a fucking yellow cab with a, with a bag of Subway on his lap, holding onto his missus as they're travelling through the city... It's a funny picture. Of course that made sense. But if they would have jumped into the back of a Range Rover Sport or an SUV or an Escalade, no one would have cared. They would have just rent off, you know, tinted windows. It would have been fine. They would have gone back way back home under their, you know, behind their big massive gate. But who decided to jump jump in the yellow cab? Again, this is this is giving it's giving a little bit intentional. It's giving on purpose. Why do they jump into a yellow cab? Why don't they have a driver driving them in one of those big black SUVs that celebrities are always in? Are they trying to pretend like they're broke? Because we know they're not broke. We know they're not living in a, in a flipping one-bed apartment. Hmm. 
It continues. The insider alleges that one cameraman hit the car while another man almost ran over an NYPD officer during the near fatal ch chase. And this is America. This is New York. It doesn't matter if it's whatever. New York is obviously there's a lot of traffic there, and sometimes people getting around in the subway is better than getting around in the taxis. I understand, but still, there are people that drive SUVs and Escalades and whatever they're called in New York City. There's no excuse of not having one of those big black intimidating SUV type machines there waiting for you as you leave your gala, slip back in the back of it, chill out, eat your subway in peace, and go home. There's a picture of them looking lovely. Actually, Megan looks delightful in this dress, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. She definitely knows how to wear the fuck out of her dress. Prince Harry looks like he's just nipped out on his lunch break in the office. But hey, we continue. <laughs> um, that's them at the event. We're told the trio was pursued by 12 paparazzi after they left the Women's Choice Awards. Um, it started off with 12 paparazzi. Okay, that's her accepting the award there. The award for having really nice hair and a pretty face, I guess. I don't know why she gets awards. Like, I would be embarrassed to be accepting these awards on, like, the daily or weekly or monthly basis. Like, why am I getting an award? I know, she looks amazing. She takes a great picture. She's very photogenic. But surely you don't get awards for just being photogenic every single day. You have to at least do something. A little bit of something. She just turns up and just gets an award. Hey, you're really hot. Here's an award. <laughs> it's like, what? And it continues. It started off with 12 paparazzis, then ended with four chasing Megan, Harry, and Doria, the insider tells us. The security tried their best to lose photographers. Once in a taxi, Harry used his cell phone to record the ensuing melee. So Harry, instead of having his arm around his very attractive wife and, and his arm around his very stoutly and stern-looking mother-in-law, instead of protecting them with his body, he was there recording the whole exchange like a little Karen shaking. <laughs> put your phone down brother and i don't know step out of the car and knock out some paparazzi people come on knock out some paps make it give them some real headlines that's what you should be doing waving the middle finger outside of the car fucking no gallagher style spitting at them or something like recording it with your phone hold on babes let me get out of my phone so i can make sure everybody sees what's happening they can't be doing this so let me let me just record this so i can see what happening Sorry, babe, one second. Let me just record this. This is completely out of order. This is completely unjustifiable. Put your phone down, brother, and start launching those elbows. Start hitting them with some headbutts. Weren't you in the fucking army? You must have a couple of punches in you, a couple of, a couple of headlocks. Something, come on, man. Anyway, it says, we're told security was also recording to gather evidence. So security is recording he's recording who else is recording this is like a karen off isn't it fucking hell security should be secure in the space they're not harry should be protecting his wife and you know fighting paparazzi with his bare fist he's not who's wearing the trousers in this fucking relationship who paparazzi's were confronted by uniformed police officers but ignored warnings continue chasing the trio that's them again a rep from the Sussex claimed the page six on Wednesday. Last night, the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex and Miss Rangland were involved in a near catastrophic um, car chase at the hands of the ring of the highly aggressive paparazzi. This relentless pursuit lasting over two hours resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road and pedestrians and two NYPD officers. So essentially, they're snitching on the immigrant driver that was driving around New York City in that yellow cab. That, that God bless that driver, whoever they were, they basically snitched on them. The driver nearly killed us, right? Hassan nearly killed us. Jose nearly had us in a near fatal accident. Abdullah nearly ended our lives. Like, come on, man. Don't leave your life at the, in the hands of some random yellow cab driver if you're a fucking, you know, if you're part of the royal family by extension or by marriage. Maybe, you know, get an SUV. Maybe book an Uber X. I don't know. Come on. While being in a public figure comes with a level of interest from the public, it should never come at the cost of anyone's safety. <sighs> Our source calls the incident absolutely shocking, says Raglan, who is 66 years old, was particularly terrified by the ordeal. Everyone is still upset, to say the least. It was horrific. We hear the suits alarm, and her mother and husband were still in NYC following the Harry events. All right. But yeah, it looks like they're trying to trigger people clearly because of what happened to 
the legendary and magnificent Princess Diana, RIP to the great one. They're trying to basically cause that emotion from people and get them flipping worried that way. But essentially, nothing happened. They got harassed like everyone else does. Celebrities getting into their car by hungry, thirsty paparazzi. And they turned that into a whole entire victimhood complex thing. These guys are the worst, man. I'm not going to lie. They're the absolute worst. Um, I, I think it's all for attention. I think it's all absolute bullshit. And yeah, too much. Too much of this, man. Can't do this anymore. Enough. Leave us alone. Just leave us alone. Could you please? Is that possible? No? All right. I get it.